So there are two things this video will teach you. First, to understand and use the product benefits. And second, to be aware of fake marketing tactics. Trust the brand's philosophy. Then the company is just trying to force you to buy the product just because of the name Squalane. Hi everyone and welcome back to Beauty Essentials by Asia. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe for your eternal beauty. <laughs> In today's video, I'm going to talk about cosmetic labels. So finally, you will understand everything and each sign written on your cosmetic box and label. So as you know, everything has its specific version of behind the scenes so in skincare, it's all about cosmetic labels. So if you want to really understand each sentence and sign on your bottle, continue watching this video. I know sometimes all of us are too lazy to read all those ingredient lists on our cosmetics, but if you really want to be safe and secure and really get the best out of your cosmetics, start reading the ingredient list. And believe me, after you catch the habit of reading, the next thing is going to be to understand which claims and texts written on your labels are under certain regulations and which are not. So basically, those which are not under any regulation, such as words natural, organic, cruelty-free, and so on, are mainly for the marketing. So I want you to really understand each claim and know the reality behind all of those claims. So there are two things this video will teach you. First, to understand and use the product benefits. And second, to be aware of fake marketing tactics. So here comes the first tip. If you really want to buy organic and natural products, then don't just go for products which have those words written on it, but search for a certain stamp and a certificate or the logo of certified product. So there are different organizations which give awards and certificates to organic products. So if this really matters for you, then search for a stamp and not just a word organic. But if there are no signs and stamps, then there is no regulation. And unfortunately, the manufacturer can write whatever he wants. Some of those organizations are NSF, National Science Foundation, BDIH, Cosmos, ICEA, Environmental and Ethical Certification Institute in Italy, USDA Organic, and many more. Of course, this can also come from someone's personal choice because one of the most important things in using a certain product is to trust the brand's philosophy. And as long as you read the labels and research the ingredients, you are all fine. Here comes the most and my favorite part, ingredient lists. So the most important thing about the ingredient lists is that they can be in two forms. One of them is the inky name the one which you probably don't really understand, those Latin words. And the second form of the ingredient names you may see on the labels of your cosmetics is the common name, those words we usually really understand. For instance, if you buy a product which has an aloe vera extract in it, its inky name might be this one, which I'm not gonna read. So I personally prefer to read the inky names and I will tell you why. Because it's more detailed and it's the true name of the ingredient. And I, as a cosmetic formulator, really understand a lot from the inky name than just the common name. For example, vitamin C appears in different forms. Please check my Instagram page down below to view my reels about vitamin C. And there is one form I prefer to have in my skincare since it is the most 
stable one, which is L-ascorbic acid. So as you see, vitamin C may have different forms and accordingly different inky names. So if you read just the name vitamin C, you will not understand which form of vitamin C you are using in your products. So here is the next important thing you need to know about ingredient lists. Ingredients in your product are listed in descending order. So the ingredient, which is the most in your product, basically highest percentage, is listed the first. The next most used ingredient goes second and so on. So all you need to know about this is that the first five to six ingredients listed in your ingredient list are the highest percentage and basically the quantity of the ingredient you are going to use. So sometimes you may read on the box that the product is made of highly popular ingredients, for example squalane. But if you don't see squalane in the first five or six ingredients, then the company is just trying to force you to buy the product just because of the name squalane. And instead, it gives you something else, probably something much cheaper, to make your purchase and task easier. I will now mention some dictionaries which are gonna help you understand the full concept of ingredients. One of the dictionaries is Inky Decor or Paula's Choice Dictionary, which explains what each ingredient of the specific product does. I will put the link in the description below for you to see. Now let's talk about the tricky part. The name fragrance or parfum is widely used in ingredient lists. But sometimes people don't even know why is this ingredient listed. When a fragrance is mentioned, you should already know that it's an ingredient or a mixture of ingredients to mask an odor or the opposite to give a nice odor. Some of them are essential oils. The thing is that the manufacturer doesn't have to tell us what is used in his mixture. That's why I personally avoid buying products with this ingredient since I prefer to know what I apply to my skin. Now let's go over some terms that you have heard for sure, but you don't know what they exactly mean. One of them is the organic in ingredients. First of all, this term is regulated by national organic program. Secondly, a company can use the word organic in their company or product name with impunity. Another phrase such as organic is it may also contain. There are a lot of product boxes and ingredients that include this phrase. But how can we actually define and understand it? This term is basically for an alternative ingredient which is placed at the end of the ingredient list. Now, together, we will understand all those symbols written on your box or product itself. There are also symbols that are included in the box, which gives you an overlook of how long can the product last. One of those symbols is this minimum durability symbol. You need to be careful because in the US the expiration date is not required. So if you choose to use it, make sure that the product is usable. In the Europe, however, the expiration date is required, which has this symbol right here. It may also be written as best used before the end of the year or the month, depending on the type of the product and ingredients. One important thing about the expiration date is that if the durability is greater than months, then the minimum durability isn't required. However, after you open the product, there is another symbol that indicated the product after opening. So the numbers you see here show how many months or weeks I can use the product. There is also the symbol E which basically stands for the estimated sign. Basically, the average quantity in a batch of the package must not be less than the nominal quantity stated on the label. The funny thing is that this label is again not acceptable in the US because it is not required. However, if you are producing something in the US and want to sell it in Europe, the estimated symbol is required. So lately, we see many environmental claims. And there are two general environmental claim types, broad and specific. 
Now let's understand which one is which. So the broad environmental claims are the ones that are generalized, such as eco-friendly, environmentally safe, sustainable. The specific environmental claims, however, refer to the green guide. So what does green guide mean? These are statements that tell you what the product can and cannot do. For example, some of the claims green guides include are non-toxic, recyclable, ozone safe, it might also include some environmental images or recyclable symbols. Conclusion I think this video covered a lot about the claims, labels, ingredients and I hope I could help you to purchase better, safer products for yourself and what you need to believe in or not. I think I covered the majority and the key points of cosmetics that you need to know. But if you have any specific questions, I'm here for you with all of my knowledge and experience. So feel free to drop me a comment and please do me a favor and like this video because that's very important for me me uh, since my English channel is new here and I promise to cover many important topics about cosmetics, skincare and not only. So see you soon in my next video with Love Beauty Essentials by Asia. Bye bye!